Rob Rev Oran, how are you doing, brother? I'm doing good, Ian. How are you, sir? Yeah, fantastic. Yeah, I've been busy. I've got a busy weekend coming up. And uh, as you can guess, that you've popped up first. You, uh, we've got no technical support as such. It's um, me uh, taking over Joe's role, as you know. But if you're joining us tonight, welcome. Um, I'm going to try and get some of your messages in, say hello to a few people. And um, if you're joining us for the first time, this is, this is Tough Talk. This is our little live chat on a Friday night. Tough Talk is a Christian charity, and uh, I spent a lot of the time going into prisons and schools and drug rehabs and churches and street outreaches preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Um, this weekend, I am up in Preston, Rob. I'm working with a church in Preston, and then I'm coming back for Bank Holiday Monday. I'm going to be in uh, oh, yeah. with Kensington Temple down at Notting Hill Carnival. Uh, you I love it. Well, I, I love and hate it at the same time. <laughs> It's not my thing, but um, I, I we stand out in the front of the church at KT mm. and preach the gospel to all the crowds that are coming past, and uh, we have a bit of fun out there as well. But I'm um, I'm down to this week, so let's say hello to a few people. So um, who have we got with us tonight? Let me see if I can do the Joe we got, thing. We haven't got the message. I haven't got the messages on the right. Um, I don't know if they're turned off or not made public. Or I can I can see them, brother. I don't. It must be you your can sister. see them. I can't. Yeah, I've got Claire. I can flip put them up for you. Claire's with us. Can you see that coming up on the screen? Just on the main screen, but not on the yeah. not on the side. I don't know. Yeah, I, don't I suppose that's me. I can't help you then. I can't see any of them. I'll just you'll so, just have to take note of the ones I put up. We got Claire with us. How are you doing, Claire? Has Adam? We got uh, Philip. There you go, Philip. And uh, how are you, Philip? Adam is with us. Evening, gents. There you go, evening, gents. It must be your end, Joe. Something's uh, Rob. Something's going on your end. Got John with us. Malcolm's with us. Andy f uh, is with us. So I'm with, we're doing an outreach with Andy up in Rotherham in a couple of weeks with the. Rotherham Elim Church. It's probably got another name, not quite 100% sure. We've got Liam with us. There you go. And uh, Rachel. Hi, everyone that's tuning in anyway. So um, please leave your comments. Oh, Lisa. How are you doing, Lisa? I haven't seen you for a few weeks, I think. And uh, uh, there you go. Claudine's with us. So it's you've got me, Rob, but we do have a special guest, Rob, tonight. Uh, before we get him out, um, quick, uh, how you been? What, what, uh, we call you Rev Rob. You are Reverend. Tell us a little bit about yourself and, and Hereford, where you now live um yeah i'm i'm a <laughs> tell us a little bit about yourself. i have gone from being a, a policeman to a lawyer in a sense to a vicar who's moved from all these things who's now basically a a, a caregiver a foster carer um someone said to me when i got ordained i went from arresting people to um defending people to trying to save people which i which i like i didn't come up with that but i like that when i first heard that so and now i'm i'm trying to i suppose trying to care for people well that can't be bad can it if you like so that sounds a bit cheesy but there you go that, that's that. so we've got tracy it says okay the welsh are in well i don't know where shalom is tonight shalom's shalom will be here sure Sh well maybe joe's not here so shalom no, 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 no. but anyway let's get our guest out so about a year ago is it about a year ago is it that quick? i couldn't believe it i felt like we had nathan on about a couple of months ago and i, I when i look back it's been this time last year about a year and ago we had nathan so on. we had nathan we and it's a privilege to have nathan back nathan um at the time uh, he was um uh, studying i believe to become a, a doctor or whatever it was and uh uh, and we've called it Dr. Nathan tonight, so he must be a doctor. And uh, he um, goes to church with Joe. And uh, mm. we had a great conversation with him last year. Uh, Joe um, wanted him back on the programme. And Joe told me not to kick him under the bus because he's not with us tonight. Um, so I promise um, I won't. Uh, maybe I will. Let me kick him under the bus. Like Only Joe would organise a personal guest on a night when he wasn't available. I there mean, you go. <laughs> how can you not expect to be thrown under the bus? He said, "Please don't <laughs> tell anyone." Just you know. Don't... <laughs> <laughs> he, he, he knew I was going to do it anyway, regardless, didn't yeah. he? So let's get Nathan out anyway. Nathan, how you doing? Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Listen, it's great to see you again. You're looking well. You're looking younger than you did last year. Um, it's been a good year. I suppose this time last year, you was actually handed in all your feces or whatever you call it. The, the, it was that moment, wasn't it? It was a crunch moment for you. Yeah, I think it was September. So I handed it in middle of September, had my oral defense in December, which is when you get grilled. Um, passed that really well. And uh, my thesis is going to be a book next year. So that's all been yes. all be good. Fantastic. So tonight we we were going to talk about what is faith, but let's just recap a little bit. Uh, Rob, want to throw a couple of bits at you, and then we're going to get into this subject that um, 
I don't know if you wanted this out with Joe or what happened, but um, Joe, as we know, we're throwing him under the bus because I think that's only right as he's not with us. Um, uh, but yeah, we're going to talk about what is safe, and um, I'm looking forward to this. So, uh, and to be honest, we've had some really interesting guests over the last um, six or seven weeks that have really been different in their faith. Um, you know, we've had uh, a, a lady I know very well called Beryl Moore, who's um, involved in all sorts of deliverance ministries and healing ministry. Um, she's in the late 80s now and uh, serving the Lord, uh, being used by him every day. A couple of weeks ago, we had uh, we had Bob, the builder from Speakers Corner with us. And uh, we were talking, uh, touching on apologetics, actually, but mostly about the whole um, Islam and does it conflict with Christianity. Um, and then we had, uh, last week, we were talking about Catholicism, but we had a whole... Cold Beach with us a couple of weeks ago, again, he, 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 talking about um, suffering and stuff. So I was half expecting when we were going to get you back, it was going to talk about suffering, but been, <laughs> which I'm glad because I was thinking this week, you know, we only just did that the other day, but we were going to talk about what is faith. And um, yeah. sometimes that probably seems like an easy... Actually, before we go down there, Rob, throw out a couple of questions you've got. For no, no, no. My questions are kind of are, are, are different. I think we should get into... All, all I was going to say before was... Um, I obviously had faith that that Nathan was going to pass his viva and become a doctor, um, <laughs> but that was going to be such a terribly cheesy thing to say. That I wasn't going to say it. Um, but we don't often have um, doctors of philosophy with us from Cambridge University, do we? Um, tell us before you get onto faith. Tell us where you're at now. Are you applying for university positions? That sort of thing. You're doing any lecturing? Um, yeah, um, yeah. I mean, I've been spending most of the summer applying for various posts. I've got a couple of research. Um, positions I've applied for uh, as a permanent post as well. I narrowly missed out on a Cambridge lectureship actually last week. I was there back up. So that was oh! really frustrating. I know, I know. I'll yeah, tell you, well, you must have done really well because that's, because having not had a post yet, I mean, to get yeah. that post to Cambridge. Well, I mean, I, I should I should clarify, it wasn't a permanent post, but it was, it was, a, it was, a, it was a lecturing post. Yeah um for for a year to cover someone who's left but they would then seek to fill it permanently yeah. but yeah it was, it was very close didn't quite make that one that's just the state of things in academics at the moment so i am i am doing some supervising and i'm doing some probably some teaching at cambridge this year but but just paid hourly us at the well, moment it is a thing dr natham i can see you've only got natham there but i do like the doctor <laughs> stuff uh, <laughs> it, there has to be a god because if I, if you knew me uh 30 years ago I was running around smashing heads and taking steroids and I was a violent, out of control young man. The last people I would have ever expected to be sitting chatting to on a Friday night would have been an ex-copper and a doctor of philosophy or whatever it is. I mean, you know, I, I was dealing with people that were sniffing cocaine and, and stuff like that and running around like a, a proper herbert all that time ago. So for God to bring us together tonight to discuss anything, to even be connected, for that to happen, there has to be a God. There's no possible it's way. In itself. It's a miracle. There's no way I'd be sitting chatting to the fellow on my left, on my screen, who's got the tough talk top on, old Rob Oran, because I despise coppers. And, um, mm. and, and and maybe when he was a solicitor, I needed him a bit more. When he, I'd have I come was, and defended you. I would have done. Rob, that was I kind of I like those characters when I was banged up and 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 there you would bowl in the cell with me and uh, but so really in a way even though you are a vicar now and you've you you you've been to you know, your vicar college and done all your stuff who would have thought I'd be sitting talking to a, a doctor Nathan Hawkins about what is faith but here we are and uh, I would say a lot of people would say well faith is just faith is isn't it it's like but you're going to take us to a different level I think so why don't you um. Uh, open some stuff up for us, brother, and um, let's uh, 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 and we'll take the conversation. I'm going to throw loads of things at you, and guys, if there's anything you want to ask us, um, you, you know, as we heard just now, it's not often you have a, a, a doctor. Of, is it? Am I saying this right? If you're a doctor of philosophy, it's not your doctor, though, is it? Is it that right? Well, in, in, everyone who does a PhD is technically a doctor of philosophy, but I'm a oh, doctor you go. in philosophy, so it's the original kind. Of... Well, I think I think what I'd, I'd start off with. A little test. I wasn't going to do this, but oh, but please do. Yeah, what saying, yeah. And forgive me if I said this last time, but I mean, when I'm asking what is faith, I'm really not that interested in ask in questioning whether or not God exists. And the reason why I'm not really interested in in questioning it is because I can't honestly question it myself personally. And I realized that when I started to do philosophy. So for me, the question wasn't so much do I or do I not have faith in God. The question is. 
what does my faith in God consist in? Like, what is the basis of my faith in God? What does it look like? What does it mean? What is the fact that I am, the fact that I believe in God, what does that mean? Um, how does that change things? Because until I could answer that question, I found it difficult to explain to others the difference faith made or what part of me was the faith element. And it may be easier for someone like yourself, Ian, who has had a transformative conversion experience. And you can say, I once was lost and now I'm found. Yeah. I mean, of course, everybody that has faith has that story to a degree, but I was brought up a Christian and I've always... Uh, I've never really known what it would be like not to see the world in a certain kind of way or not to live by certain kind of principles. So it was more a case for me of understanding faith as a case of disentangling and coming to be able to articulate the centrality of my faith to me, um, to those who may not have had the experiences I have or see things the way I did. So for me, the what is faith question is is a case of more trying to um do some self-exploration of, of, of what is it that God has me. And here's, here's one last thing I'll put in this. Um, there's something, there's, there's a principle called the principle of first mention in scripture, which is if you want to understand an idea in the Bible, look at the first time it appears. And the first time um, faith appears in the Bible, the word faith, um, which is a moon in Hebrew, I think, a pistis in Greek, is actually not what you'd expect. It's where Moses is um, on top of the mountain while Joshua is fighting the Amalekites. And his hands are going weary. When he raises okay. his hands, they yeah, start yeah. winning. When when he his hands drop, he starts losing, and he gets tired. So Aaron and her, two two people, um, two men, hold his hands in place till the sun goes down, um, and Joshua wins a great victory of the Malachites. Interesting. Now the word, Interesting. Yeah. The word faith appears in that story. That's the first time in the, in the Bible it appears. Yeah, so you'd think it would appear sometime yeah, during yeah, yeah. Abraham, but it doesn't, yeah. appear, it doesn't appear in Abraham. Because Abraham is uh, mentioned in regards to faith quite a bit, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. I mean, he obviously has. So someone's put here Hebrews 11, which is, I know, somewhere you want to go as well with this. So <laughs> yeah. John's always a, already ahead of us there. Uh, uh, Adam says, uh, and I want to just ask this just before you move on, because I, I, I am on technical sport. Rob can't see the questions, and we've already got a question here. Could you briefly, or do you want to hold that for a moment and answer that later? How do you de define the difference between faith and religion, please? Um, and Rob's putting up that he's got questions as well. So questions are coming in. So do you want to hold that one or, and answer that later? Oh, it's more important to get to the questions from, from the people I can't see. Yeah, yeah. please fire in your questions. This is, a, this is this, we want to answer them. So, okay, great. So um, I'll just quickly finish the Moses thing and then I'll go to that. Do so that. the word faith appears in that story, which says Moses' hands, in our Bible, it says Moses' hands are steady until they're going down to the sun, but it's literally translated Moses' hands had faith. And so I think it's a beautiful picture of what I discovered faith to be, that faith involves, you know, Moses' hands are the ones of faith. And, and Moses is here reaching up to God, depending on God for, for life and, and what's going on, but he hasn't got the strength to hold them there. So at the same time as Moses is reaching up to God in his inability, he's being held there by Moses and Aaron and his faith is being held. And I think what I what I experienced when I started to think I needed to interrogate my faith is I experienced the fact that my faith was more about God holding on to me than it was about me holding on to God. And I think that that um, I think I did say this last time I was here, too, that at that point, I realized my faith was not fragile and I could interrogate it and I could uh, try to understand it more. Um, and that was just a wonderful thing for me. So so then I was able to explore it. So let's get this question about religion and oh, faith. Yeah, religion and faith from Adam Salter. Please do. Yes, brother. Yeah. So in some ways, this is this is if I tell you what I think the difference is, I'm, I'm giving you the spoiler alert for, for, for the answer that I have come to. And I think what that is, is that um, faith is something too sort of too deep and fundamental um, and transformative at the very core of our being for it to be reliant upon anything else, that it's, it's, it's the thing on which everything else depends. So religion is a, a manifestation. It's a way of kind of trying to live in faith, in, in, in an honest way as a result of faith. So, so faith hits you. Well, let's just think about Paul. Paul's traveling on the road to Damascus and he encounters um, the risen Christ, blinds him, knocks him off his horse. Now, 
Paul at that moment wouldn't have been able to make sense of that experience. He wouldn't even be able to make sense of what now, like how does that change everything? Paul has this whole baggage of being a Pharisee, a way of understanding the world, a way of right. interpreting what it was to be a holy yep. and righteous yep. person, right? And for him, that involved persecuting Christians, it involved yep. establishing the law. He has he has a completely what you might call rupture event mm. that transforms everything, but it's not something he can understand immediately. Yeah. God tells him to go away and it will be told him what to do by somebody yeah. else. But then he spends, I think it's three years or so in Antioch, conversing with the disciples to try and to try and reintegrate this experience, this new encounter with his understanding of scripture and the world. And it takes him a long time to figure that out. Mm. And so his doctrine and his gospel message slowly develop as the initial event starts to filter through and integrate into everything else. And so I think what religion is then, religion is a current way of trying to put flesh and bones onto onto that raw transformative encounter with the risen Christ. Yeah, I get that. I mean, I, 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 quite often I'm, I'm not one that's a fan of, um, uh, uh, you know, um, institutionalized religion and, and religious sort of denominations and stuff. But then I do also see the importance of that because you need to have some sort of flesh and bones, as you said, some sort of substance to your faith. And uh, we were discussing that quite a bit last week about um, the early church fathers and Catholicism and stuff like that, weren't we, Rob? Rob, do you want to ask your, bring in your question at this point, brother? I've got, I've got loads, just... Go on, because I've, I've got, I know, I, know, I know I've got a couple coming up as well. So find yeah, one it's... that you want to say, because I know you texted me a little while ago and then yeah, we'll I'll let park, the conversation I'll, I'll, I'll park one or two for later, perhaps, but just where Nathan's is now, and referring to something that he mentioned last time he was on about a church that he planted that seemed to be far more about, less about, a, 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 you know, one central doctrine or set of doctrines. Uh, and, and it was formed not with that as its central thing. Um, so I'd like to hear more about that. And the question would be, so in terms of faith and doctrine, how far does it matter what we believe about God? taking that initial experience and moving on from there where that's where I would sort of kind of gently challenge you on that. What do you think? Yeah. Start with the simple one, Rob. Um, <laughs> so, so again, I think, I think belief is important. Um, and I think how we then understand um, the, the impact of, of Christ's death and resurrection is going to affect how we think and understand everything else. But I also want to say that I think that our faith is only superficially at the cognitive level. And I know that's a bit of a mouthful. What I mean by that is that um, how you understand and make sense of the risen Christ that you've encountered, the transformation that you've experienced, which I think is, is the root, um, the root of, of, of Christianity and a walk with God is going to is important because it will color how you try to live faithfully to that mm. but we err i think when we substitute the understanding for the substance and where we think it becomes our duty to defend the particular ways in which we've understood understood it um and i think so 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 it's it's it, it then becomes a bit trickier. So, I mean, some some of what I we we can go a little bit to where I was going to go before. So, I think I think belief. I, I'm a big fan of belief, but belief has only we understand it in two scientific terms. We understand it in terms of the theory we have about the world, <laughs> the yeah. things that we would confess and say. But but really, be, I mean, the word belief originally was be living. It's from the old English be living. And what someone believes can be determined far more by looking at their life than asking them questions. Look at James. But yeah. Can you give an example of the sort of thing that you mean um, as you, with, with what you just said previously? Um, you talked about the cross and uh, what that means to you and then how you live your life. Can you, can you give an example of what you mean about what's important and, and what's less important? If I understood got the general gist of what you were trying to say or am I missing it? Yeah, no, I think so. Um, if 
Wait, let me let me give a simple example. Imagine somebody, you ask somebody, can money make you happy? And they say, no, of course it can't. But they spend 80 hours a week at the office and never see their kids and are pushing for that promotion. What do they believe? Good, yeah. And it's not, it, and so the question then is, is what does it even mean to believe in God? Yeah. Is it, is it, is it about answering the questionnaire right? Is it about seeing Peter at the pearly gates and being able to answer the three questions he said, he, he poses? Yes. Or is it is it something that's just deeper? It's, it's, it's something that is manifested in everything that you do, everything that you are, in your values, in your way of seeing and interpreting the world. So here's, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm running through this quickly, so stop me at any point you want. But here's another major thing. Um, I'm going to introduce a bit of philosophy here. So Wittgenstein, for example, he asked this question. I think it was really powerful. He says, if a lion could speak, you could not understand him. And what he means by that is that we think communication happens at the level of language, but it doesn't. It happens at the level of shared experience, shared view of the world. And so a lion's experience of the world is so utterly different to a human yeah. experience that we wouldn't be able to communicate because the meaning of our words has to relate to something that's in common with us. And this is where I think that Christians, through the transformation of their mind, which manifests in some ways in the doctrines that we would hold and the ways in which we think, but it's deeper than that. That means that we should experience the world in a completely different way to those who don't have God. In this case, in this way, Believing is seeing. Faith transforms what we see and respond to in the world out there. It transforms how we think and it transforms how we live. It has so to let me jump in before Rob does. He's waving the pen at you, but I'm going to get, because you two are going to go off on a tangent that uh, I won't understand in a minute. But let's, let's get back to, to one point that I wanted to focus on. So <clears throat> to have faith, um, we're talking about faith. The Bible says faith is the substance of things hopeful, the evidence of things unseen. The Bible also says faith uh, comes by hearing, hearing the word of God. So when we talk about faith in Christ and Christ, it, that's different from what we look at with other religions, isn't it? Because Adam was talking about religion and faith. Would we say that, say, people that believe in Islam or in Allah, is that faith or is that a belief? Are we saying that there's a difference there, Nathan? Well, so in a sense, I think that if you take faith as a as a principle then everybody has faith in that everybody has a certain worldview a certain way of living and a certain um way of thinking about the world when it talks about the scriptures it's impossible to please god without faith surely us as christians is a different level than say yeah. believing in you know this table this chair is going to hold me up there's a there's a faith in christ and the resurrection that's different from a faith i'm going to get healed or a faith that uh, a god might exist isn't there yeah, so this is this is where I think um, the connection between faith and hope kind of comes in. Um, faith being the substance of things hoped for, and Jesus being the author and finisher of our faith. So what that I, the way I understand that is that uh, take go back to Paul. There's this initial encounter with Jesus. That was the author of his faith. But at that point, it's it's like it's like being born again. I mean, it's like this new life that just yeah. starts. It can't make sense of itself. It can't articulate itself. Right. So that's the experience of faith that we're really talking about. Is that? Which, yeah. With, and that's that's the that's the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is life. Right. Right. And he comes in and dwells us, and it creates this new kind of life. Yes. Um. And that that then, I mean, if you want to call that, that's a certain that's faith in God, right? right. Um. And that then begins to grow. I mean, this is the way. I, this is why I think Jesus's parables are often about growing and seeds and development and manifestation later. Um, I think that starts within us and it should, if we are faithful to it, it should start to take over us in every single way. It should take over our values, our, our experience of the world, our thoughts and our, and our living. Um, and so any of these things will be expressions of that, but we've just got to be careful we don't then think that that's what faith is. Faith, yeah. is, faith is this... Uh, Nathan, when you um, uh, we were talking about doing this this week, um, you sent a picture over of of uh, uh, of Isaac and and Abraham, and this is obviously pre Christ, but obviously we see this as a kind of a a type of of faith that the New Testament talks about how Abraham and Isaac and by faith and was accredited righteousness and all this kind of stuff, and also uh, a type of the sacrifice that was going to come. Um, why that picture as well? What what, what is it that you? Because you, you obviously picked on that for a purpose, my friend. Yeah, yeah. So, um, well, first of all, he 
the sacrifice of Isaac is one of the examples of faith in Hebrews 11. It's yeah. also the um, the story that a philosopher called Soren Kierkegaard just meditated on for a long time and wrote right? Fear and Trembling. It's all about faith. Right. He just asks the question, why was this act such a great act of faith? And he starts to really explore that question. So it's partly why I had that. I was um, wondering how long it would be before you mentioned Kierkegaard. <laughs> I can't I listen back last time. I thought you're you're gear could call. Yeah, man. well, I can't I can't claim to be much of an expert on it to be honest. But um, so I think I think okay. So before I answer that question, I'm going to throw in a, another kind of concept, um, which I think is where the connection between hope and faith comes in. So if you go go back in go back to sort of medieval ages and ancient Greece and all that stuff, when we started to try and make sense of the world. The way of understanding the world is in terms of what we call teleology. So if you want to understand something, you ask, what is its purpose? What does the perfect version of this look like? And then you think, well, this is the ideal of what that thing should be. And then you look at what the reality is and think, how is this reality heading towards that? Right. So you had a way of understanding the current world by saying, what should the world be? Where are things heading? What is the ideal manifestation of this? And then kind of work backwards. Then there's a shift in scientific understanding that happened around time Galileo, where the way of understanding the world went totally the other way around. Mm. You started to see, instead of understanding your present moment in terms of where things are headed and the work that's being done to drive forwards, which is a very kind of human psychological way of understanding things, because we experience the world in terms of, I do this because I want this to happen. We're thinking about the world, we're living now for certain things we want to happen in the future. Instead, science told everyone the other way around. It started by explaining the cause of things, looking in the past. How we are now is because yesterday it was like this, and that caused this, and that caused this, and to look at laws that start from the distant past and explain the current moment in terms of this knock-on form of cause. So what I think faith involves and how it's related to hope is that it, in seeing Christ as a sort of a first fruits, as a perfection, as an ideal of of what it is to be human, what it is to be good, what it is to live in total dedication and unity with God. We recognize that is the ideal of humanity. That is where we are headed. That is, that is the truest manifestation of a human walking with God. And we start to orient our life or take a posture in life towards that aim. Right. And so then where the doctrine comes in and the way we make sense of Christ comes in is that our hope <laughs> is then that the, the deepest truths will become manifest. Mm. And those are the triumph of good over evil, ultimate justice, uh, it, eternal life, but a life of the um, everlasting um, reality of goodness and the complete reduction and annihilation of evil. And we see the first truths of this in Christ, but then our act of faith towards that is to say, no, this isn't just something that happened to one person at a certain time in history. This is the story of reality manifested in the microcosm of Jesus that we are all called to participate in. Mm. So you then live life on the belief that evil is temporary, fleeting, and in many ways not real. And goodness is eternal and far more valuable than anything else so you live you take a posture that says of defiance against uh evil things happen to good people etc and injustice living to whatever degree to see that changed but because you know that at the end of the story that is going to be a completed work yeah so Just what to... i want to do nathan and before you ask another question rob um, we've got questions popped up here hold that question one second i'm going to give you a breather for a minute we're halfway through the program get yourself a glass of water i mean there's a lot of people out there that are probably um just hanging in you know trying to pay the bills and uh hanging in with their you know the reports they've got about their their, their, their health and uh you know are they going to be uh, uh, uh you know they, they might have got some terminal sickness and different things like that um and they've got a hope or faith that God is going to provide for them. I mean, for me, I remember um, literally encountering this living God in a night of violence and crime, sitting in my car, weeping my eyes out, encountering God. I just felt an incredible sense of peace and love, like I was being cleaned and washed. And uh, and then the journey of faith really began. It was like, um, okay, and, and actually a, a bit like what you're saying, almost putting it to practice. And then the evidence and fruit of that started to change in my life, my life 
changed in the way I behaved, the way I acted towards people. Um, and, and it was all down to faith in what Jesus had done for me on that cross. But some people, faith is just to get through the day. You know what I mean? It's like, um, how the heck do I... How do I heck do I get through this? Um, you know, the kids are getting, uh, you know, the school's talking about kicking my kid out and stuff like that. Is that a different fight kind of faith, or we is that trusting God that He's going to provide for you? Is that still the kind of faith when we're talking about faith in Christ? Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, I think so. So I think what I've been talking about more is the global aspects of faith. You know, this sense that regardless of the current circumstances, regardless of whatever suffering there is, regardless of what seems like the triumph of evil, the march of injustice, or the, or the growing power of the darkness, it's, it's a defiant attitude to that saying, that's not the end of the story. And then in some ways, then if the, the, the problems that we encounter financial difficulties and you know we've all gone through as those. we go through these life that's what life does to you doesn't it whether it's the yeah. devil whether it's you know just circumstances we have everyone's touched by these problems aren't they yeah so i think faith is first and foremost a peace and a confidence that even if we are consumed even if even if our troubles do overcome us that that that, that actually that's not the end of the story that the light will triumph and in in eternity justice is done uh, goodness uh, has its is its own reward, and so instead of instead of being so results focused, we try to become more ask different questions of just how should I walk through this. But on the other side, you know, the reality of life is that we have very specific and localized problems, problems issues. and issues that we have to encounter as well. And quite often, people lose their faith in Christ or in God when maybe their prayers or what their outcome didn't happen in the way they were hoping. Um, you know, yeah. they fall away from what they would say, the faith. Um, I no longer believe in God because X, Y didn't happen, you know. Um, yeah. uh, so I find that interesting because I, th I think what I certainly see in Scripture and I see in the world is usually the thing that causes people to lose faith is not usually suffering, but is is luxury and safety. I mean, you look at Israel was always most in danger when they seem to not be in a time of crisis. So you're saying that actually in times of crisis, maybe faith really does kick in. Is that what you're saying? Well, it certainly seems to, and I've seen that in my life. I mean, the times I've been closest to God are often the times where I've uh, I've struggled to make sense of where I'm at. And my initial reaction, I mean, my initial reaction is never to shake my fist at the heavens. Uh, right. My initial reaction is to grab onto God for dear life because it's all I've got left. Um, those sorts of uh, deep and difficult times of the soul where you feel abandoned or, or betrayed or, or completely let down, including if it's by God. I have only ever found at that time for me to fall on my face and say, well, not my will, but yours be done. I don't understand this, but I know you're good. So that is the, the when the rubber hits the road, as they say, isn't it? It's like, OK, what are we going to do about this? Hell's broken loose. God, where are you? And it's as if people have got um, they're challenged with two options, aren't they? Rob, do you know what I'm talking about when you're having that crisis in life? And and I know some of the people that are watching us now are suffering in that place, aren't they? We're literally um, they're exercising their faith to hang in there. Um, the rubber hits the road, doesn't it, brother? Yeah, it does. All I was going to try and say, and, it, and it's a difficult thing to articulate, but was trying to just take what Nathan was saying about Telos and taking it back to the Bible, hopefully that people can can, can hang on to. So this idea that the telos, um, which is, you know, the, the, the end goal completion from beginning to end. And when you take that to all things cosmically, that's what everyone began to realize post Jesus's resurrection had happened. That's what we get at the beginning of John's gospel. That's all I wanted to really mention. So the beginning of Genesis, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. John was articulating in the very first few words of his gospel, mirroring Genesis. In the beginning was the word, and that's logos, which is very close. It's got similarities with, with, the, with the word telos. In the beginning was the word logos, and the word was with God. Logos is, the, again, the meaning kind of... Um, Nathan's a mathematician as well. It's got mathematics. It basically means the meaning, purpose of God. So... John in the beginning is mirroring Genesis saying since the be beginning of all things, Jesus was. Jesus is part of the Godhead. He's part of the Trinity. So 
and he's also personal. God came, created the, the, the heavens and the earth, came to me as in a person. That's what John said to me off. So the point is from the foundation of all things, it's personal. Um, and then when we, if we can grasp that, and it is difficult to grasp, as the suffering comes, Nathan just put it beautifully, you're all that I've got. When you realize that God and Jesus Christ is the foundation of all things, and the foundation of all things who created the heavens and the earth is personal, cares about me, is in control of all things, and is the ultimate good, there really is nowhere else to Charlotte's go. saying, when I had lost all faith, that's when God took me and gave me the absolute gift of faith. And faith, um, Nathan, it is a gift from God, is it? The scriptures tell us it is, but I'm just saying, what's your thought on that? Yeah, I mean, I mean, it, it must be. I mean, I don't think anyone who's had it feels as though they've earned it, um, in which case I guess that means it must be a gift. Um, can I just I wanted to say one thing about what you'd said before. I, th I think it just, when both yourself and Rob were talking, it reminded me of the parable of the sower because the sower here, the, the seed lands on the soil. Now, some people lose that because of the trials of life and when suffering comes, they receive with gladness and it springs up and they're all excited and then, you know, um, the trials of life come along and then they wither and they die because they didn't have the root. And so maybe, I'm just speculating, and maybe some people who lose their faith when God doesn't answer their prayers or, or when trouble comes, it's because they haven't had that root for whatever reason. They, so don't they receive it maybe with a bit of joy, but they've not dug in. Is that what you're saying? Or just... Yeah, I just right. think is that, that you see that parable? Is it like um, yeah, exactly. I just think that the word of God hasn't yet taken over them completely. Right. That right. There's still there's still this. Um, so when I said earlier, faith comes by hearing, hearing the word of God. When I picked up the Bible, I remember thinking to myself, flipping heck, I'm a doorman. You know, what am I doing reading this little book? But I just couldn't help. But and I started to read about Jesus, and I just was like overwhelmed. I mean, crying my eyes out. This guy died for me. This, this, this is the son of God. You know, I, I didn't understand the word incarnate or the hypostatic union or anything like that. But at the time I, I just saw Jesus and I saw someone that was giving grief to religious people, but loving people like me, you know, and I just was like, and I knew he was alive still. That, that's faith, isn't it? I knew that he was, when he was saying, you know, um, uh, you believe in God, believe also in me, in me. you know, I, I go and I, I'm preparing a home for you. You know, I'm thinking, he, he's got me not just now but for eternity because you gotta remember i'm working on the door as a christian and i'm going to work where there's guns and knives and bats and i'm thinking how the heck am i going to survive tonight and i'd pray mm -hmm. psalm 91 over my life and i'd trust that you keep me alive when i'm watching people getting stabbed to death and for me that was my faith being exercised in the reality and i'd go to church on a sunday morning and think what the heck was i going through last night you guys i couldn't i, I just thought christians got lovely lives i want a life like them you know, and uh, to me, my faith became real and tangible, not only in like, um, but, but through the scriptures, through reading about Jesus, it became a reality to me. Um, faith is faith comes by hearing hearing the word of God. So you're right, building that. Because I could have easily, I, I believe, if, and this is, I want to say, is if I hadn't started reading the word of God, if I hadn't started reading about Jesus, I would have lost my faith because it wasn't about the Sunday morning service. You know, I had to, being it every day to get out because I, I was entangled in sin. Everything I did was wrong. So yeah, um, it's key, isn't it? Establishing our faith in. Can I ask this? Go on, bro. Yeah, you bless, bless you, brother. You're the philosopher. You've already answered the question. I was going to ask because the powerful thing that Nathan already mentioned. The, one of the powerful things he said last time was he found as he was exploring the, all the questions of God, he found that God had a hold of me. He said, God had a hold of me far stronger than I was ever holding on to God. Yeah. And obviously God powerfully took hold of you, Ian. And yeah. I think God powerfully took hold of me. So the difficult question is, and this is for anybody that's watching this, what would you say to anybody that doesn't feel God's got hold of them? Either is not yet a Christian and is open and wants to, to know God, but, but just hasn't felt God grab them in an irresistible way, let's Good say, point. or is struggling Good we talked question. about something a minute ago and doesn't feel God has hold of them yeah, yeah, in yeah. that way that they have this fight. And a lot of people go through that. I'm, I'd love to know thoughts, Nathan. True, true. Many people will say that to me. Oh, I was all right for you. You know, you, it's a tough you, question. Yeah, I know there's yeah. no perfect answer. Well, I mean, I can only talk from my own experience. And so I didn't recognize or didn't, wasn't aware of God holding me until I was 25 and I'd become a Christian 
at the age of four, I subconsciously gave my life to God. So I don't know at what point you're so far in that, that God's yeah. Yeah. kind of got a hold of you and you kind of can't even understand who you'd be without that part that, that's so much a part of who you are, how you make sense of the world, how you, how you make your decisions. Um, I think that you find, if you find God and you recognize you found the one you love, the one you're looking for, it's almost like then, then nothing else has the taste and nothing else has the draw. I mean, I, if, you, if you find if, if earthly terms, if you find the woman or man of your dreams, then, then it's, others are not a temptation. Um, and then at that stage, I mean, anyone in a love relationship like that would recognize that the other person has a hold of them as much as they have a hold of the other person. And you've just got this relationship that, that goes beyond um, the surface levels and the potential for disruption. Now, it might not, you might not get that immediately. Uh, and I, I don't think there are any specific rules I could say, but anyone who's in that position, I'd just say, seek God, hunger for him, thirst for him, yeah. make him yeah. bigger in your life. Let him consume of your, more of your headspace, more of your time, more of your... More Every of your fruitful time. relationship is two ways, right? Every fruitful relationship has got to be two ways. Draw near to me and I'll draw near to you. Um, and um, so, uh, yeah, I, th I think just, just dive in. And, and if you've just picked up the taste for it, yeah, as I said, like faith is something that grows. I mean, yeah. there is all this seed analogy. Yeah. Um, and if we're looking in the parable of the sower, what are the ways that the seed fails? It fails because the trials of life can destroy it. If there's only a shallow root, you can be absorbed by the, by the, by the pleasures of life and the pursuits of life and the prides of life. That's the thorns that can choke you. You can just be hard hearted and not listen. So something is going to happen in life that is going to challenge your faith, whether you're going to be pleasures or whether it's going to be hardships. Shalom's put, and she said, um, Rob, go back a few. Rob's not doing any of that. That's me. I Joe, can't see Shalom, that Shalom, you should know that when Joe's not with us, I have to do the technical stuff. And uh, but he said, I she said, I suffered domestic violence for years. The only thing I held on to was my faith. He made a way out for me, maybe not when I wanted it, but it was in his time and it was perfect timing. And 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 I think that is the the the, the, the rub of it, really, isn't it? It's like we go one way or the other. I, I, you know, I have many conversations as an evangelist. You know, I, I talk with people a lot about those times, and it's that you know, I have them on the. I was talking to someone on the streets today about you know, well, you were lost, and a bit like what you were saying earlier, then you was lost and you needed to be found. I, I, I feel like I've always been found, and uh, it was it was a bit like David Icke, this guy. He was quite in all sorts of uh, you know, World Economic Forum stuff at me, but just want to want to talk about Jesus, but um, uh, or definitely Jesus is anything other than a prophet. Um, but yet, like, uh, it's, it is that moment that maybe faith really, I suppose, gets tested, doesn't it? I suppose even when we think about Abraham and Isaac, you know, he went up to worship. But I suppose that's whatever he felt the Lord was saying to him to do there. It was faith because the scriptures talk about he had the faith that, that even if there was going to be resurrection, there was he, he, this was the promised child, you know. So whatever he was being called to do, he had faith that this child would live, you know. Um, that's... When it hits it, that's when it's it all gets serious, doesn't it? It's like um, we can wave a flag on a Sunday morning, we can clap and play that, but when we're facing the crisis during the week, like Shalom's talking about there, or what I mentioned earlier, those crunch times, that's when it, 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 you know someone goes one way or the other, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I think I think Abraham, what you said there is is Abraham had got to the stage of being so certain that god would bring about his promises he was open to however god might do that and if god told him to do something that seemed to be working against those purposes that he'd already ordained abraham saw it as just as a twist in the story and yeah. that it somehow no matter what god would end up turning even this even this around and nevertheless uh manifest his will and I think that that is the way in which we need to understand God at work in the world. Mm. And that who knows the means and methods that God uses or, or why certain things are certain ways. But we can be assured and have faith in where God is going and, and, and who is leading things and who's really in charge, despite 
what the circumstances appear. So going back to my David Icke fella this morning when I was talking to him in, I think I was in Seoul at the time and uh, in central London, in West London. And, uh, you know, uh, it, it, it was as if, um, uh, you know, um, he, he had faith all these kind of crazy ideas. Uh, I mean, this guy was off the scale. He was a lovely guy, though, but he was like, you know, he, he wanted to convince me there was aliens on Mars sketching the stuff and different things. It was all... But um, just because I kind of understood a little bit what he was talking about, the World Economic Forum and the IMF and stuff like that, he kind of he was all on me, you know. And um, But I, I have it from a totally different perspective, and I was talking to about Christ, and uh, I, I just find that faith in, in, in the resurrection, no matter what I'm going through, and if prayers are answered or not answered, and I've been through hell and back in 30 years as a Christian, um, that is what I hold and cherish most deeply, that Christ died for our sins and rose again. To me, and all else fails, whether it seems like God is answering my prayers because someone's put, you know, he's faithful and he'll finish the work he started. And I, I believe all that, but sometimes it just doesn't go how you want, does it? You know, it's like, Hey, what's going on out there? You know, it's like, Lord, are you not, you're not there for me anymore. I don't feel you. I don't hear, you know, what's going on. But if I then sit down and get on my knees and think about the cross and think about him dying on the cross and then rising from the grave and ascending and the spirit, it, it, everything else doesn't matter to me. I, I don't know if, you know, um, but anyway. Uh, yeah, well, in, he in, in Hebrews 11, you know, that's what Paul is saying. He, he talks about people got sawn in the <laughs> and stabbed and um, all these people. And he said, and, and these not seeing the promises died but they well he says about the patriarchs that they recognize that they're strangers and pilgrims on this earth and i think what he's saying there is that faith recognizes that kind of this world isn't really where it's at right that this isn't this isn't this isn't the the rock bottom point of reality this True. is a certain manifestation of 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 reality but it's an appearance in which we are strangers and sojourners we're walking through this path so our faith isn't really localized to ourselves it's not about our own our own faith or, or sure. being the hero of our story um it's the, it's an expectation for that um justice and that that to 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 be on the other side of death um, sure. and when when all is said and done the, the god is uh, and rob we've got another intellectual listening to us right now joel's cornell this is um nathan's pastor and joe's pastor i believe you're still there are you uh, nathan is that right Are you still there yeah, yeah, yeah. so um nathan joel's 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 when rob comes uh, when joe comes back to church have a word mate <laughs> <laughs> have a word uh, anyway um rob sorry brother no, 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 no. All I was going to say was, um, um, I don't know if we're well, 50 minutes in, um, the Abraham and Isaac story, if it's, if, if you're happy for me to re read a few verses. Go on, it, brother. Yeah, go on. Kind of, Listen, do it. Um, put it, put, put it in a little bit of perspective. If, if either of you then want to, want to take it on. I'm just going to read from verse four. Um, so this is Abraham and Isaac, Genesis 22. I know you both know it very well. On the third day, what else happened on the third day? Jesus rose from the dead on the third day. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place far away. Then Abraham said to his young men, stay here with the donkey. The boy and I will go over there. We will worship and then we will come back to you. Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on his son Isaac. And he himself carried the fire and the knife. So the two of them walked on together. Isaac said to his father, Abraham, father. And he said, here I am, my son. He said, the fire and the wood are here, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? Oh, come on. Abraham said, God himself will provide the lamb. Mm. If you really dwell on that, there's no way in the world you can make that up. There's no way in the world you can fabricate it. <laughs> tell us, as we were going talking and, and Nathan was talking before, to tell us, you go back to the foundation of things and you take it all forward back you know through all of human history we have one of the central that's the greatest prophecy or one of the greatest prophecies ever made prophetic word probably the first great prophetic word to abraham because he was so his faith was so strong he was going to do anything for the one and true god and he gets to say god himself will provide the land mm. we talk about john's gospel when um john the baptist is introduced to john's gospel what's the first thing he says behold pointing to jesus Behold the Lamb of God. 
So within this whole thousands of years to the beginning of time, to this point through to the time of Jesus, we have this, the stories there, the overarching Beautiful. story. It's, it's, it's unbelievable, isn't it? It's it's just, just, the thread is just fantastic. It's just like God said, is going to do you, it. You, you can't make you can't make this stuff up. It's just beautiful. Oh. Uh, um, the end. The end is, is it, the, the idea of telos is that the end is inscribed in the beginning. Right. Exactly. You can't. You actually. So this is where you know where people ask questions about we're in Genesis. Why did God put the tree of knowledge of good and evil if He knew Adam and Eve would sin? But, it's, but you can only even understand any of that stuff in the context of the end of the story. Oh, the end. Wow. So you have to. You have to. It's not that God made some mistake and He's scrambling around trying to fix this and doing things yeah, now, yeah. cause things in the future. Everything works the other way around. Yeah. And this is this is why Paul can say things like we are seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus, because yeah. we recognize that the true reality and the true nature of who we are isn't in our current circumstance, wow. but in in who we are predestined to be. That's the kind Come of on. predestination that, that, I, that I believe in and that the seed of God at work in us cannot help but manifest itself in its fullness. Wow. At, when all is said and done. And this doesn't this doesn't mean really at the end of time. This actually means in the depths of reality. This is the way I understand it. The deeper truth, the deeper mm. things. Because mm. the deeper truths and deeper things are those which are more closely associated with God himself. I mean, God is the center of reality. So we can here now confess to the, to the, to the relatively fleeting and fading nature of everything that we see. And then Paul can say, well, what are my sufferings that I'm experiencing now? And these are sufferings like being stoned and <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. left for yeah. dead. Yeah. What are these compared to the weight of glory? Wow. And the word glory actually, I think, just means weight of presence. Mm. It, the, the, the actual meaning of the word glory is just the weight of presence. And the weight of presence of God, the weight and presence of goodness, it has a depth, a heaviness, a reality to it that, I don't know, watching Love Island just doesn't compare. <laughs> <laughs> when it comes down to it, you just think, oh, my goodness, these things are so fleeting and just fleeting. Even Arsenal. No, Arsenal. You're not Arsenal, man. You're Tottenham, aren't you? Rob, no, you're no, Arsenal. I'm, I'm, I'm Joe, Joe's not here. I was going to say West Ham and then at Love. Listen, that's a good point, really, because, you know, you'd be surprised how much a man puts his hope in something like football or, you know, TV reality and and and... and Stuff that just isn't important, not just like family and stuff, but the stuff that doesn't actually really even affect their life. You know, the lionesses lose the final and, and people are crying and as if like the world's collapsed around them. And it's and sometimes I think ever since I I come to faith, I have no longer those reactions to things. You know, like I would have been the person crying when West Ham, if West Ham lose a game and, and get depressed and if England, when England inevitably get kicked out of a world, I would have been like, Oh, you know, this is a nightmare and be depressed. And, but, you know, the reality is when I came to faith in Christ, um, that that's stuff like just wasn't important. Now, I'm not saying family and stuff isn't important. Of course, of course it is. But I still always have that hope no matter what. Christ is central. And not just when I say the word Christ, I mean what he accomplished for me on that cross, when he died for me and rose again. And I'm very conscious. Uh, and it's uh, at the time, he's, he's somebody was it's already disappearing on us. And, uh, uh, and I love at this point to just think about um, eternity and, 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 and you know, that, that Jesus Christ said that those that believe in me shall not be condemned. You know, I've not come to condemn the world, but through me, the world will be saved. And maybe you're listening to this program and you're thinking about faith and what is faith and what is religion. Um, and this faith we're talking about isn't just in your circumstances or that God is going to answer your prayers. This isn't in the facts that Christ is it is the is the incarnate god he died upon the cross for the sins of the world that before a holy god we're all sinners we've all fallen short of god's standards by nature we're objects of wrath but in his goodness his mercy he was pierced upon that tree for us he became a curse to redeem us from the curse of the law of sin and death that we might be born again we might have a relationship with him because of what he done for us and i always think of religion as a way of reaching god and 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 really faith is that christ came and touched my heart and if you don't know him right now you can get right with him i want to just quickly say a very quick prayer and i'm going to have some final comments from rob and and for and from dr nathan uh and uh we're going to conclude the program but if that is you you just you're just struggling you're on the edge right now and you just don't know how you're going to get through the day or what's going to happen to you let me put your faith and trust in jesus christ he is the rock and then pray this prayer right now in the end we're just going to say amen say it in your heart and at the end we're going to say amen and it's, uh, Heavenly Father, I just come before your throne of grace. And by faith, I cry out to you to forgive me as a sinner 
that I've done wrong before your sight, that you died upon the cross to rescue me, to save me. And by faith, I come and look to the cross. By faith, I cry out to you today that you would rescue me from my sins. Cover me in your precious blood. Fill me with your eternal spirit. Father God, I just give you my heart today. In Jesus' name, amen. Guys, we've got about three minutes. Rob, final questions for uh, Nathan, brother. And it's got to be punchy now because we're right now. The only thing, one of the only things didn't get to was he said last time, Christianity is needed now more than ever. I don't think that's a 30-second answer, though. But we need 30-second answers. We've run out of time. So, But, yeah, repeat that for me, Rob. What is it you're asking him? Christianity is needed now more than ever. Uh, but so I is, can't that what, is that previous comment he said? That's a quote from Nathan. This is a quote from Dr. I'm Nathan. Not, we've, we've left that one. We've left that one too late. No, just to say, uh, to, to anyone that isn't sure what I was talking about before in Genesis 2, the Lamb of God is Jesus was the sacrificial lamb. Just to say, anybody who isn't sure. So as Ian just prayed and said about Jesus being on the cross, he was the Lamb of God. So they had a, a sacrificial system throughout all the Old Testament times. Because God is a God of perfect justice, he can't just go, oh, that's fine. That's that you've done that wrong thing. You've found you that you've done that wrong, wrong thing. We've all done wrong things. You know, it's said that when we pointed fingers at somebody else, we've got three pointed back. Mm -hmm. If we're all honest with ourselves, we've all done something wrong. Sure. God can't just ignore it. There has to be justice, which that must be. There have, must be ultimately consequences, um, which the Bible speaks into greatly. So when Abraham said God himself will provide the lamb, he meant, whether he knew this or not, prophetically, that God himself was going to provide a, a sacrificial lamb for all people, for all time, including all of us here and all of us watching, that our sins would be atoned for and forgiven. That's what we mean by God himself will provide the lamb and Jesus is the sacrificial lamb of God. I'm doing a joke there. I was reading someone talking about football and I should have been serious because you were talking on a very serious subject. We've got a minute or two. Nathan, wrap up, um, um, just summarise. I'll bring well, a, a conclusion. Whatever you want to do in the next couple of minutes is all yours, brother. OK, well, I was just going to say that uh, I think Christianity is needed now more than ever because it's become so obvious in our culture that without God, uh, morals don't stand on their own. Um, and I think... Um, I think that Christianity is needed from a cultural level to just rescue us from our own decadence and uh, and and enable us to not use any means to produce what we think of as justice in the world, but but commit all things to God as judge at the end of time. So that's partly that's partly the thing about Christianity. But yeah, I mean, the sacrificial system we have to understand in a teleological way, in light of Christ, it was a precursor to what's a truer kind of sacrifice, which is through Christ. And that's the way I think we need to understand all the Bible. We need to start thinking about our own lives, living living today in the light of eternity, with, with, with being conscious of, actually conscious of our own death, our own finitude, our own uh, limitations, throwing ourselves into the arms of the everlasting and far more powerful God and, and living as best we can in faithfulness to that and trusting God's grace to make up the difference. There you go. That was very well articulated. Um, very <laughs> inspiring. Yeah, no, listen, it's been a privilege having you. I'm sorry that Joe wasn't here to be with you. Um, you can, you can have a little uh, word in his ear next time you see him as well. Um, I did promise I wouldn't throw him under the, I didn't promise I wouldn't throw him under the bus. <laughs> it was inevitable. I was going to throw him under the bus. Um, Listen, it's been great having you, and uh, I hope it goes well in you it, when you pre when you're preaching in the lighthouse. Uh, Joel said you are preaching soon. When's that? Tenth September. And so this is the lighthouse church in Ely, uh, in Cambridge Way. Um, uh, we're a lovely church. Um, we've done a few meetings there, and uh, love you guys, Joel's, and and all the the guys. We was there this year doing some open air stuff. I'm sure it was this mm -hmm. year. Yeah, losing yeah. track yeah and uh but keep tough talking your prayers guys where i'm out this weekend in preston over the weekend then i'm uh down at notting hill carnival on monday which is always a wild affair i've been doing it for over 20 years last year was the most hedonistic wicked den of iniquity i've ever seen i think even a police officer got raped there last year um but what a place to preach the gospel of jesus christ you know i believe that uh ct stud wrote i'd rather be uh, make my church 
uh, near the gates of hell than in, 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 in be west there's smells and bells or something like that you know like i'd rather build my the rescue shop or something like that he said and that's the truth i'd rather be at night Hill carnival preaching the gospel than seeing in a nice little holy huddle somewhere not that i'm against holy huddles i love them but you know what i'm saying <laughs> guys it's been a privilege having you nathan bless you love you uh, Rob, you're awesome. I'll see you guys. We're going to end this program and uh, see you guys next week. Thanks for joining us, everyone. Was I the joy of the Lord for your strength. Bless Amen. you all. See ya.